All right, you need to jack your trailer up so that your wheel's off the ground. Now, if you're using a hand lug wrench, you'll have to loosen these before you raise it up. But then get it, get it raised up off the ground and then take your lug nuts off. Now you gotta remove this little cap. Just get you a soft hammer. And then we've gotta take the castle nut off and it'll have a cotter pin through it. You just straighten out the legs and pull it out the other side. A lot of times it's easier to just grab it with some needle nuts and knock it out. And loosen the castle nut. And these bearings are kind of old, so it's it's loose. You may actually need a wrench to get it off. These are these castle nuts are inch and a half. I don't know what yours will be. Okay, and then try to keep that race from falling out on the ground, and then you just slide it right off, just like that. And that's got your assembly off. All right, so I have to reuse my castle nuts and my washers. So to do that, I like to use a peanut butter jar full of uh, paint thinner. Just drop them down in there. All right, put the top on it. And then, and then just shake it. And after just a couple of minutes, they come out nice and clean. All right, so now in order to take the bearings out, the outer race will just come out like that, and there's a washer there. And then the inner race, you have to knock it out. So I'm just gonna set this down in a vise. You can set it on a couple of two by fours, but it also work just as well. And then you need a punch, and you just go down inside. Just go back and forth from side to side and you're trying to knock that either the bearing out or go ahead and knock the race out now. Okay, the seal. There's the seal fell out. And there's the bearing. And now there's a race in here that you've got to get, you've got to knock out. And you need to go back and forth on it. For one side. So if you look down inside of it, you'll see the very edge of this down on the bottom and you just lay your punch right there and hit and go back and forth. You'll hit it and you'll feel it move and then it gets kind of tight and you just move to the other side and keep going back and forth until you've knocked that race out. Then you're going to need to flip it over and knock the race off the front. And it's just done the same way. All right, that's got the inner race out. Well, this was actually the outer race. That's got the outer race out. Okay, so now once you've got the bearings and the races out of there, you want to get the extra grease out. The easiest way I find to do that is just get you a piece of uh, wood. A popsicle stick works really good, except you would want to cut the rounded end off because it's nice to have some square points to get down into the corners. And if you take a stick and just wipe, wipe out the bulk of that grease, I usually just wipe it on a piece of cardboard. And there you can see it's gotten most of it. It's gotten most of it out of there. And then what's left, just take you a piece of a paper towel and wipe the rest of it out. Now, if you want, you can get some solvent. Paint thinner works really well to uh, cut this kind of thing. I wouldn't use gasoline because it's so flammable. If you've ever started a, a uh, bonfire or something with some gasoline you know how one little spark can come from 10 feet away and and light it and be kind of scary so I wouldn't use that but you could use something like like I said like paint thinner or um, something like that works works really well but in my mind it's really unnecessary if you just use something like like a paper towel 
you can quickly wipe this stuff out and be ready to go. If you um, if you do use some thinner, be sure that you get it all dried out of there before you put your grease in. Um, you can blow it out with an air compressor or something like that works really well. But there you can see, it makes a nice clean job really quickly. Getting the last remnants of that, that grease out of there and preparing it for your bearings. So to install the new race, this is my outer bearing here. And so you're going to need some type of a driver to drive it in there with. Um, I made this one, but of course you're probably not going to have metal lathe. So you can buy sets. I'll link one into the, in the description. You can buy uh, sets of these that uh, you can use to drive these in. But you just set it, you know, with the taper up like that. And just drive it until you sit seated. And you can feel when it bottoms out. And that's got it set. Now... This other one, I don't have a follower to fit that one. So what I can do on this one, the other one, I okay, what I can do on this one is put the new race in there like that and then take the old one and set it on top of it like upside down like that. Now I can do this because the outside diameter is bigger than the inside. So I, if I wasn't careful, I would drive this new I would drive this old race down and it would get stuck in there so you do have to be careful about that but I don't have a complete set uh, to drive these in with so this is what I'm going to do on this one and this may work for you also but if you buy a set it should have one that would fit this okay so then just put your board over the top and Now it's bottomed out and it's still not down in there. So I've got to take another hammer. And this is a lead hammer so it's not going to damage anything. <laughs> and I have gotten that one stuck a little bit. Okay, so I'm taking a brass drift. knock that other race out just a little bit. It just barely got caught up in there. Now you can also use a brass rod to drive these in. It's just kind of hard to do. Again, you just go all the way around it. Make sure you get it down tight. Don't ever use a steel rod or a punch to set these down in there because you can chip an edge off of them. So now that we got the races in, we got to get these bearings in there. And you have to pack them with grease. You can't just drop them in there. And the way that you pack them is get you a handful of grease like that. And then just take the outer edge and just kind of press it like that. Just keep doing that until you'll see, you'll see the grease start squeezing at the top. And when you get there... You're done. And then move over to the next section and just keep, keep doing that all the way around. Alright, that's got it nicely packed. Smear you a little on the outside and then you just drop it down into your race. Now to get the seal in there, there's a couple of ways to do this. Now this is a seal driver that I have and the way you set these up it'll come with a whole bunch of these little discs. And the, this metal one goes on top and then you find one here that fits your seal. It needs to be just a little bit smaller than your seal. And then you find one that fits the inner diameter so that it'll center it on there. And then you put that on. Now I, have, I really don't use that very often. Alright so what I normally do is I'll take a wooden block and put it on there and then just tap it lightly. You want to get it started nice and even. It's cocked up a little bit on this side so I'm going to hit it over here and get it started even. 
you get it cocked in there sideways too much, don't keep driving it because you'll just distort it. And then do it until you get it flat all the way around. This one seats just even. Sometimes you have to drive them a little bit below, and that's where this comes in handy. You can set it there, and it'll drive them down below the surface just a little bit. Now, let me do one with this and show you the difference. Okay, so you can also take something like this and use this seal driver, which is a little bit easier. I don't know if I find the wood easier just because I've used it for years, but... Goal here is to get that seal in there nice and flat. Now, before we uh, put our new bearings on here, we want to get this cleaned up. So, got a little dirt on it. Now, you can wash these with solvent. That would probably be the preferred way to do it. I'm not going to go to that trouble today. I'm just going to wipe them down with a paper towel. Now we're going to install our new bearings, and this is our this is our bearing that goes on the inside. We're going to use a little multi-purpose grease and wheel bearing lubricant. This is just lithium grease. It's kind of this white color. Be sure you got a clean finger. I'm just going to make sure that I've got enough grease up in here. What I'm doing is I'm packing this area right behind that. You want to be sure that you get grease back in behind this. There's a little pocket back here. You just want to fill that up. Don't fill the whole hole up. Just this pocket in here. And then on the other side, you want to fill this area right behind the race. Like that. And then making sure this is clean. I don't want to get any dirt in there. Make sure this is clean all the way back. And then slide this on. Make sure my, making sure my seal is seated back there. All right, so I've pre-packed my outer bearings. I've cleaned off my gloves. So I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna slide it right inside like that. Next, I'm gonna put my washer on there. Now, before I put my castle nut on, I want to notice where the hole is that my cotter pin is going to go in. And it is right here. It's at about 1 o'clock on that bolt. Then I'm going to tighten that up until it's tight. And I can feel that that axle is tight. It's actually too tight. All right, so it's tight, and we know we've got some resistance there, so we want to back it off now. And we have to line up the notch in our castle nut to our hole. So you usually back it up about a quarter turn, which puts us right there. We'll put that in and we'll see. Yeah, I like that a little better. You don't want these too tight because if they're if they are too tight, it'll cause heat in here, um, and then you can actually get a fire. But uh, if it's also if it's too loose, your bearing will wear unevenly. So I'm happy with that fit right there. And I'm going to take this cotter pin and bend it up and over like that. All right, to get these little caps on, it can be a booger and. The easiest way to get them on is to kind of hold them back here. Now, don't get your fingers smashed in behind there, but you just want to start kind of tapping. And you're hitting on the edges here. You just get it seated really good, and you're done. Put 
your lug nuts back on. All right, that's got our new trailer bearing installed. Hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for watching.